now we are discussing the formal modeling and verification uh, methods and what we do or what can, what we can do in software engineering about the formal modeling and verification so we have uh, something called as clean software engineering and formal methods and uh, they both demand a specialized specification approach and each applies to a unique verification method we have said already that uh, you know when we want to verify a uh, specification say or a model we want them to be consistent correct and uh, not uh, ambiguous means uh, it should not be ambiguous so both are quite rigorous and neither is used widely by the software engineering community but we must understand that if you must build a bulletproof software these methods can help immeasurably they are not used this is said by uh, dr pressman but if you really want something very good you must know formal modeling and verification methods so clean room software engineering is that approach that emphasizes the need to be to build correctness in the software which you have developed or you are developing what is the philosophy behind the clean room software engineering the philosophy behind this clean room software engineering is to avoid dependence on costly defect removal processes why do we want this by writing code increments right the first time and verifying their correctness before even we can test so its process model incorporates the statistical quality certification of the code increments as they accumulate into a system so most uh, developed methods they they are using formal methods they are described using formal syntax and semantics that specify the system functions and behavior so rather than using the models or the diagrams here we want to emphasize on the formal syntax and semantics the specification should be in a mathematical form and mathematics is always verified so in, in his introduction to the formal methods anthony hall makes a comment that applies equally to the clean room methods that the formal methods in the clean room software engineering they are controversial the advocates claim that they can revolutionize the software development but those who doesn't advocate or their detractors think they are impossibly difficult and meanwhile most people formal methods like the screen room software engineering they are so unfamiliar that it is difficult to judge the competing claims the clean room process model we start with the uh, let us see these are different increments so let us see the first increment and this uh, goes for all other increments first we have a specification which, which is box structure in this we start with the or we follow uh, the test planning or in these uh, uh, different different modules first we use the box structure specification then we design it formally then we uh, verify for the correctness and then the inspection of code is done and the test planning is carried out here then we use the statistical and use the training base of the statistics and then we certify so in this the different different path is increment planning we adopt the incremental strategy first of all in clean room strategy the requirements gathering will define a description of customer level requirement for each increment the box structure specification means we describe the functional specification then the formal design the black boxes or the specifications are iteratively refined with certain increment to become analogous to architectural and procedural design we call them as state boxes or clear boxes here then the verification of correctness the verification begins with the highest level box that is specification and then we move towards design detail and code using a set of correctness equation so if these do not demonstrate the specification is correct more formal or mathematical methods for verification can be employed then the code generation inspection and verification so the box structure specification represented in a specialized language they are transmitted into the appropriate programming language here for the code generation the statistical plan test planning is done a suite of test cases that would exercise the probability distribution of usage they are planned and designed then the statistical usage testing we execute a series of tests which are derived from a statistical sample uh, you know we see the probability distribution of all possible program executions by all users from a targeted population certification once verification inspection and usage testing have been completed that means we have corrected all the errors the increment is certified as ready for integration in the box structure specification this modeling approach is a clean room software engineering use we use a method called box structure specification so a box encapsulates the system or say some aspect of the system 
at some level of detail this box so through a process of uh, elaboration or stepwise uh, refinement boxes are refined into hierarchy where uh, each box has differential transparency so in this box structure specification there are three types of boxes black box state box and clear box in the black box the black box specifies the behavior of the system or a part of the system uh, a system uh, respond to a specific event or a stimulus by applying a set of transition rules that may map the stimulus with the response in the state box the state box will encapsulate the data and the operations of the services in a manner that is analogous to our objects and in this specification view we are talking about specification here inputs to the state box that is the stimulus and the output that are the responses they are presented and the state box also represent the stimulus history of the black box that is the data which is encapsulated in the state box that must be retained between the transition which are implied and the clear box the transition function that are implied by the state box they are defined in a clear box and if you want to uh, simply state it clear box contain the procedural design for the state box so we start with the black box we have bb1 then we go to bb1.1 till 1.9 again we step wise refine it and then we reach to the sb that is the state box and after that we again redefine it redefine it and we move to the clear box in the black box specification the black box specification describes an abstraction stimulus or the response using the notation like this so our function f is applied to a sequence of inputs these are s and it transforms into an output response r and for simple software components f may be a mathematical function but in general f is described using certain natural language or we call it as a formal specification language so many of the concepts introduced for object oriented systems they are also applicable in this black box so data abstraction and operation that manipulate those abstractions are encapsulated by a black box then we come to the state box sb specification so the state box is again a simple generalized or generalization of state machine state machine as the processing will occur a system respond to certain events that is to make a transition from a current state s1 to s2 so the state box uses a data abstraction to determine the transition of next state and the action that will occur as a consequence of the transition and we refer to this figure the state box incorporates a black box g this is our black box the stimulus s that is input to the black box arrive from some external source external source and a set of internal system states and tmills provides a mathematical description of the function f of the of the black box contained within the state box so black box contained within the state box it is given by t is equal to s star into t star which trans uh, set into r into t where this g is the sub function that is tied to some specific state t uh, when considered collectively the state or sub function pairs that is tg define the black box function f this function which we are talking about state transition in the clear box specification the third one the clear box specification is closely aligned with the procedural design so clear box is procedural design and structured programming so in essence the sub function g within the uh, state box is replaced by the structured structured programming constructs that implement this g and the black box g as you see here is replaced by sequence construct that incorporates the conditions in turn this can be refined into certain lower level class clear uh, boxes as if you go for the stepwise refinement in clean room testing we use the statistical uh, we use the statistical testing so we test the actual usage of the pattern of the program we try to find out the usage probability distribution we analyze the specification to identify a set of stimulus stimulus cause software to change behavior we create the usage scenarios and assign probability to each stimulus test cases are generated for each stimulus according to the usage probability distribution so we have certain certification models now sampling model component model and certification model in the formal mo method concept the formal method they are used in developing computer systems they are mathematically based techniques for describing system properties and such formal methods they will provide us with the framework within which people can specify they can develop they can verify system in a systematic rather than an ad hoc manner systematic rather than in ad hoc manner and the encyclopedia of software engineering uh, says this content 
And the problem with the conventional specification is there are contra contradictions, there are ambiguities, there are, there are vagueness, there are incompleteness, and the abstractions are always mixed. In the formal specification, we want certain properties. Consistency, completeness, and lack of ambiguity. These are the objectives of specification method. So the formal syntax of specification language will enable or empower requirements or design to be interpreted only and only in one way. Eliminating any ambiguity that occurs when a natural language like in English or a graphical notation must be interpreted. So the descriptive facilities of set theory logic notation will enable the clear statement of the facts that is the requirement. So consistency is ensured by mathematically proving that initial facts can be formally mapped, say using certain inference rules, into later statements within the specification. In the formal method, the concepts are data invariancy, state, operation. So data invariant means a condition that is true throughout the execution of the system that contains the collection of data. The state means many formal languages just as such as OCN uses the notation of states as they were discussed earlier. That is the system can be in one of the several states and each represent an externally observable mode of behavior. The Z language defines a state as the stored data which a system would access in orders. In the operation, an action that takes place in system and reads or write data to a state, these are operations. So we can have a precondition of this and post condition. Precondition defines the circumstances in which a particular operation is valid. The post condition defines what happens when an operation has completed its action. In mathematical concepts, we have sets and constructive set specifications, set operators, logic operators, sequences. And you know about all these because it is basic mathematics. So in the formal specification language, a formal specification language is comprised or composed of three primary components, a syntax, a semantics and set of relation. So syntax defines the specific notation with which the specification is represented. A semantic would help to define the universe of the object that we'll use, we will use to describe the system and a set of relation that describe the rules that would indicate which objects properly satisfy the specification. So the syntactic domain and the semantic domain, the syntactic domain of a formal specification language is often based on the syntax that is derived from the standard set theory notation or say predicate calculus. In the semantic domain of the specification language, it will indicate how the language represents system requirements. OCL, we discussed OCL, we have indicated OCL just now, object constrained language. So, uh, uh, formal notation developed so that the users of UML can add more precision to their specification. All the power of logic and discrete mathematics is available in the language. However, the designers of OCL decided that only ASCII characters rather than the conventional mathematic notation can be used or should be used in the OCL statements. So like an object-oriented programming language, an OCL expresses or expression involves operators operating on an object. But the result of the complete expression must always be either true or false, that is Boolean. The object can be instances of OCL collection class of which set and sequence are two subclasses. The Z language, organized into schemas, it defines the variables, it establishes the relationship between these variables and the analog of module in conventional language, the schemas. So this was about the uh, formal method and clean room strategy. And uh, if it is being said that if you follow this, there'll be no ambiguity, there'll be completeness and consistency. Thank you so much.